today we will be solving the problem count almost equal pairs one so to solve this problem right we are going to follow this approach first we will try to under understand the question then we will dry run couple of inputs then we will build the logic then we will see the coding part so right this i felt the problem is like uh, hardest of the medium problems because this problem involves a critical thinking so if you haven't tried this problem yet please go and give it a try don't watch the video before trying because if you try right then only you will improve your problem solving skills and if you fail to solve this problem in the contest go and give it a try because in the contest you have the time pressure right so after the contest you will be free and you may able to solve this so i am hoping that you have tried this problem for at least 20 minutes then you are watching the video solution now first let's understand the problem you are given an array numbers consisting of positive integers is saying that numbers and we these are all my positive integers we call two integers x y in this problem almost equal if both integers can become equal after performing the following operation at most once is saying that two integers x and y they are almost equal if the following operations are performed choose either x or y and swap any two digits within the chosen number right we can choose x or y and swap any two digits within the chosen number suppose you are choosing y right you can swap any two digits in the y if you are choosing x you can swap any two digits in x and you can perform the operation at most once that means you can perform zero times or you can perform one time so only this scenario is possible now we need to return the number of indices i comma j in numbers where i is less than j such that nums of i and nums of j are almost equal so almost equal after performing one operation note that it is allowed for an integer to have leading zeros after performing an operation so you saying that leading zeros are possible after performing the operation now let's say this input first consider this 12 comma 21 12 comma 21 now now i am telling that this is x and this is y and i will try to swap y if you are swapping 1 and 2 right it has become 1 2 and these both are equal and you saying that yes this is my valid pair this is my valid pair now consider 3 and 30 now consider 12 and 17 12 and 17 now 12 and 17 if you swap it right it will become 71 so it's not equal you will say it's not valid now 3 and 30 right If you are taking three comma thirty, we have three and we have thirty. What I will do is, if I swap both this, it will become zero three. But, but if you see here, this is my zero. This is leading zeros. Ah, uh, it that for integer to have the leading zeros, we have this zero. But these both are equal, right? This is three, and this is also three because leading zeros will not contribute to my number. It's simple. So three and thirty is also valid. Now if you see all ones, so all the all the pairs are valid. So it will five into n into n plus one by two, n into n minus one by two, right? So five into two, which is ten. Now one two three and two three one, these are not valid. So I think you have understood the question, and we have dry run the couple of inputs. Now if you see the constraints, constraints are very low. We are saying that total number can be up to hundred only. So we can go with order of n square. We can go for every pair, and he is saying that. Nums of i can be ten power six. That means ten power six means hardly I can have any how many digits six digits, right? Ten power six means we can have maximum of six digits. So he's saying that. Now, now if you observe, now if you observe, consider this example: four two three one and four three two one, and these are my indexes, right? So at most you can perform the operation once. So either you can choose this or you can choose this. any two integers you can choose so consider i am choosing this after choosing this and i will check for every element in this y now i am choosing y x and i am checking in y and for every index i will check for every index i will check at zero index this is 0 1 2 and 3 zero index there is a match so okay i will not consider two there is a mismatch at index 1 there is a mismatch at index 2 there is a mismatch at index 3 both are equal so there are two mismatches two mismatches and swap 1 comma 2 and i will swap these two and it what the final answer will be 4 3 2 1 yes this both then i will check checking the equality yes both are valid so i will return it so i will return it yes now it's working right now for every for every number for every number i will go 
and this consider this as x consider this as y for every index for every index i will check i will check and if there are three mismatches three mismatches then i will return false because uh, you can perform operations only once only once at most once either zero times or one time you can't perform two times to perform one times you can have only maximum of two mismatches only two mismatches you can have if you have three mismatches and third mismatch uh, will not qualify for our answer so we will return false so okay this is this is one case now consider this scenario we have one and one zero right if you swap it will become uh, zero zero one it's valid now if you swap this two if you swap this two same zero zero one right if you swap this if you swap this it can become zero one zero if you are zero is coming here no not this zero this zero if you are swapping these two it will be zero one zero so okay if there is a leading zero then we have a problem so how to handle this now consider this example as well four double zero three six and four three six if you observe here if you observe here if i am replacing this zero if i am swapping with zero and this four my answer will be zero zero four three six right four three six now consider this now i am replacing this zero with this four with this four now if you are replacing it my answer will be zero 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 four three six these are also valid these are also valid but you can't directly go with this right because if you are going with that there will be now if you consider 4 and 4 these are matching 0 and 3 mismatch 0 and 6 mismatch 3 and there are no values there are no values then it's a mismatch 6 mismatch so there are 4 mismatches you can find how to handle that if you have leading zeros how to handle now if you observe my final answer now any any value if you are taking any value and where there is a problem if you have the leading zeros if you have leading zeros then there will be a problem so what i will do is what i will do is if you see this final answer will be in a leading zeros will be having a leading zeros what i will do for my input right for my other input i will try to add the leading zeros try to add the leading zeros now if i add the leading zeros 0 0 4 3 6 0 0 4 3 6 and this is my 4 0 0 3 6 if i am adding the leading zeros and i am checking this functionality two mismatches functionality now here there is a mismatch and here there is a mismatch so i will swap both of this if you are swapping this these both are equal these both are equal why both are equal because we are adding the leading zeros in the front now if you observe here if you observe here 4 0 0 0 3 6 and we are adding three zeros in the front 4 3 6 we how, how many zeros need to be added how, how we will know how we will know how many zeros because here we are going with the length going with the length whichever length is maximum like whichever length is maximum i am going to add the number of zeros i am going to add the number of zeros for that after adding the number of zeros it becomes simple right now this is the mismatch this is the mismatch all are equal all are equal if you are swapping it it will be 3 6 these are both are matching so it's why how we got the logic we got the logic by seeing this we have seen here 40036 it's converted into 00436 and if you convert this to 00436 then it's easy to equate both of them then it's easy to equate both of them so we are going to add the leading zeros leading zeros at the at the front at the front we are adding the leading zeros so how many leading zeros we are going to add we are making x and y lengths equal we are going to make x and y lengths equal till that point we are going to add the leading zeros now the answer becomes very very simple coding is very very simple now go and try it by try by yourself the coding part so that you can improve your problem solving skills and you will see like how exactly i am coding it and how exactly i am thinking it now let's see this example it's simple i is equal to 0 i less than n j is equal to y plus 1 j less than n if both numbers are equal then obviously count plus plus or else i am checking it check i am keeping a check and this is my first and this is my second 
and first dot length is less than second dot length if my first length is less i am adding zeros at the front at the leading i am adding you can see zero plus first not first plus zero and at the second also zero plus second zero plus second now difference count we are taking and the first mismatch and the we are taking the second mismatch right i is equal to zero i less than first dot length i plus plus the first of i is not equal to second of i we are incrementing the difference counter and if there is a first mismatch i am storing it in the first mismatch variable if there is second mismatch i am storing it in the second mismatch variable if you have the third mismatch right directly i will return false because you can perform the operations at most once and if you have only two two mismatches if there is only two difference count then only it's possible now we will check if there are exactly two mismatches difference count is equal to two check is swapping makes the string equals we will swap it swap first match and the first second match and if both are equal first dot equals to second then this will be my true and uh, there still we will increment the count and we will return the count so if you observe here here the time complexity will be the here order of n into n has been already performed and here order of n has been performed so it will be order of n cube will be my time complexity so i think you have learned something new from this video so if you learned something new please do like and i i felt i felt I explaining this part was critical but i have given my best so if you have any doubts any doubts comment it down i will try to help you and if you are new to the channel please consider to subscribe and i have created a whatsapp community you can join there for further updates and you can connect with me on linkedin so i will see you in the next video till then bye bye